This is part three of a kokanee seminar I gave at Cabela's in Tulalip, Washington for the captain's weekend. If you missed parts one or two, make sure you go back and watch those before you watch part three. Thanks for watching. Does that mean you're going too fast? You're going too fast. That's exactly what it is. So people say, why is it 0.89 to 1.5? Okay, if it's a perfectly calm morning and there's no wind, maybe it's 0.89. Maybe I've got wind, but when I'm going with the wind on my back, I'm at 0.89, but when I'm coming into the wind, I have to go higher. Maybe I'm at 1.2 so that I can get the proper action. The mistake people make when they put their presentation in the water is they don't put it in the water and actually look at their speed and see what the presentation looks like. That's all it is. It's that simple. Look at what your presentation's doing and look at your speed. If you turn around or if the wind kicks up and now you don't feel like you're going as fast, and I know we've all done that, you're trolling, you're like, man, I don't feel like I'm making ground. It, that matters less than what your gear looks like in the water for that speed. So get your gear up there and look and see what it looks like, okay? Because that's huge. Now, dodger in an inline lure action. Let's look at this one real quick. So this is a dodger, if I, there it is. This is a dodger and an inline lure. Okay, here's your proper action. Look at how that inline just kind of dances around back there. That's very attractive to these kokanee, right? Especially when it's tipped with some corn or a maggot or you've got some scent, very attractive. Now we're going to go with the improper action. Look at this. It's rolling around. Now, a I get a lot of people say, yeah, but the inline's okay. It's still doing what it's supposed to. But here's the problem, guys. Remember when we talk about how much gear to put in the water, you can start pushing fish away. If you don't have the right action, you're not attracting the fish. They're looking at that going, what the heck? You're pushing them away. So you don't want those dodgers to roll. These inline presentations, literally, I mean, they just spin. You know, if you're going with a multi-blade, these are little, uh, like a wing deal. If you're going with something like the SEPs with the Colorado blades, you'll see them. All you want is those blades to just spin. They just spin, they don't spin fast. It's just a nice ro rotation. It's on a piece of wire, just a nice rotation. You're not getting them to scream through the water, okay? 0.89 to 1.5, that's it. Just make sure the action looks good. If you, bring, if you reel up to six feet where you can see it, check the action, is, it gonna, is the action gonna be essentially the same as it would be at like 40 feet? Yeah, so the question is, if you reel it up so you can see it, but now you drop it down to 40 feet, is the action gonna be the same? Yeah, it is going to be the same because all, all your, what, changes this what changes the action is the speed of the boat because keep in mind you're in the downrigger clip and it's down there it's at a fixed point and you're only 20 to 25 feet back so the action will be the same it's going to be a direct indication of what's going on okay okay so we've done all this work to get our kokanee and we've got them on right and this is where i see it all go south keep the drag light on your reel and I mean guys my drag is super light um, if you're reeling and that's another nice thing about level wine reels you know if, if you're fishing a spinning reel and you're not gaining ground you hear you hear the reel going zzz, okay you're burning the reel up but on these guys if you're cranking and it's not really going anywhere you're not burning those up because they're different kind of drag systems okay can you wear one out you can wear one out, but you really want a light drag. You want to keep pressure on the fish, but if he wants to take a line, let him have the line. The nice thing about kokanee is they'll wear out. You'll wear them out. When a kokanee turns over to his side, he's done. Easy to net. You just scoop him right in the net, you're good to go. But when that fish is shooting all over the place and he wants to jump up here and jump over there, put the net down. Wear the fish out a little because you want to get them in the boat. And I know a lot of guys think, man, the mouth is soft. 
I don't want to lose this fish. Lighten the drag up and let the fish play out and you'll have it to the boat. It won't be that big a deal. You do want to maintain pressure. You don't want that fish to suddenly dart towards you and then to take off with slack in the line. You do that, they're probably going to get off. Um, they're going to run, but you don't want them running out 150 feet, right? You want to keep them coming towards you consistently. And then most importantly, just take your time, you know? If you're a one-man guy, you're running the boat, you're also fishing the fish, you know, you've got a fish on, turn off the motor, put it in neutral. You know, don't fight it. Don't try and run the boat and get your fish. Just take your time. And then again, keep the fish in the water. I'll literally, when fish are close to the water, I'll tell people, bury the rod, and they'll have this rod and they'll be dancing. And I, I, when I say bury it, I want them to shove it into the water a couple feet. Keep that fish down there, let him move around, and then you can kind of come back up and reel. Shove it in the water, bury it. You'll hear, them, you'll hear me say that quite a bit when we're kokanee fishing and sometimes steelhead and co coho fishing, bury the rod, because I want to keep the fish down, I want to keep the line away from the boat, okay? So, any other questions? It's pretty basic, but the thing about kokanee fishing is, it is a basic fishery. I mean, it's pretty simple, but yet it can get so complicated because of colors. Here's a tip for you. If you're out there and it's really sunny and the sun's up here and you're fishing, rather than fish in line with the sun, fish perpendicular to it. Can anybody tell me why I'd want to do that? Why do I want to fish perpendicular to the sun? That's exactly right. The dodger or the blades or your spoon or your inline will catch that sun and reflect it further in the water. Um, UV. Guys, I think UV is huge. Some of the water in these lakes, when you get down there, it's, it's really cloudy, silty kind of, and I think that UV really pushes through. I mean, when we talk about color choices, this color right here, I can get kokanee on it, but Dick Knight, has got some new kokanee colors out there. They've got some pinks and they're hot, some chartreuses. They don't have any here in the store, I'm sad to say. I really wish they did, but they don't have them. Um, those are nice kokanee colors. I like to start off my mornings with like the chartreuses and softer colors. As I get a little later in the day, say 10, 11 o'clock, I'll change things up, depending upon how fishing's going. I might go with something a little more flash, especially if the sun starts coming up. But don't be afraid of UV. What else? Dodger size. It's a great question. So Dick Knight only has one Dodger size, okay? It's the uh, 4.0 or the 4.0. But there are other companies, such as SEPs, that have different sizes. If you're gonna go with Dodgers on Kokanee, stick with these four inch guys. Okay, they're about one and a quarter inches wide, one and a half maybe, about four inches long. I, I just don't really like the larger size. If I want that much flash, I'm gonna jump to a multi-bladed attractor so that I've got a lot of flash, but I have less movement in the water because Keep in mind, this is the attractor, okay? It's the attractor. I want them going for my lure. So I don't want to overdo it. I had somebody ask me at the sports show uh, just a couple weeks ago, what about daisy chaining uh, Dodgers together? Yes, you can do it. In fact, we'll have video out later. Um, we've already shot it, it looks beautiful. It'll be phenomenal for sockeye fishing. Don't do it for kokanee, it's too much. It's too much. Um, stay small and have a variety of multi-blade attractors, okay? And don't be afraid to have a lot of colors. I'm not kidding when I say I've got every color that I can possibly get on my Dodgers and I've gone through almost every one of them and get to the last one and that was the color that attracted them. Who knows? These kokanee, I mean, what, hap what works one day doesn't work the next. That's just the way it is. Yes, sir. How long are you waiting before you switch that? Change that 
I'll get a, I'll get a pass. Here's the thing, electronics. If I'm marking fish, there they are. I know they're kokanee. I know they're kokanee. I've just gone through them. Everything's set. My speed is right. I know it's right for the, for the gear I've got. And I didn't get a hit. I'm changing colors. No doubt about it. I'm not spinning around and hitting them again. I'm spinning around and swapping stuff out really quick. Well, that wraps it up for this kokanee seminar. I appreciate you taking time to watch the videos. If you enjoy our videos on our channel, please make sure you subscribe for more great content that we'll have later in the year. Thanks for watching.